What's up everybody, my name's Shannon, so today we're going to be diving into another budgety deck, and this is going to be Is It Mill, and I gotta say, out of all the budget decks, this one does feel very stable and very able to win, both through beatdown and through millage. Now, if you're a newer player and you want to really learn how a control deck works and want to learn how mill decks work, I cannot recommend this deck enough, and sorry if y'all just heard the pup sort of shaking it around back there. Anyways, this deck is going to be based off of Teferi's Doodleage and the Rune Crab. And then outside of that, we actually have some really fun cards that you'll probably not have seen anywhere else, if ever, before. So, Mischievous Chimera, this card is kind of a slept-on one for the budget players. Two mana for this 2-2 with flying, and it reads, Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, Mischievous Chimera deals one damage to each opponent and scries one. Why is this so important? Why is this so pertinent? Well, one, we plan on drawing tons of cards, and we can do it at instant speed, so we can do it on our opponent's turn. If we're going to be drawing cards, it's huge to scry before we draw. So this is going to allow us to scry before we're drawing our cards at instant speed. Also allows us to take down the opponent slowly but surely, right, with that one damage. And it's a 2-2 flying body, which means it has a little bit of evasive to it, evasiveness to it. Y'all know what I'm saying. So it can swing in it <clears throat> as well and deal two damage. So ultimately, you could end up dealing, you know, three points of damage each turn cycle with this card, which is pretty good for a two mana card. And you're getting the scry. So all in all, very, very beneficial. Now, outside of that, we also have Improbable Alliance to help create us fairies to either chum block or attack in, depending on sort of the pace of the game, right? And generally, you'll be able to determine this for yourself as you're playing. And as you play the deck more, you'll understand you know, more how quickly you can mill someone versus how quickly you can beat them down, right? Anyways, outside of that, we have a whole lot of spells sort of surrounding this deck. So starting at the top, we got Frantic Inventory, draw a card, then draw cards equal to the number of cards named Frantic Inventory in your graveyard. So every time you cast this and you have more in your graveyard, you're going to draw more cards, which is really nice. Enter the rule for some bounce arenos on any non-land permanent the opponent may have, and then you get to draw a card if you manage to pay 4 mana. This is really nice if the opponent is playing things such as Ember Cleave or Great Hinge. You have the ability to bounce it back into their hand and then counter it with a didn't say please. Moving us down, we have 3 copies of Ominous Seas. Because we're so focused on card draw in this deck, this is a beautiful card. Whenever you draw a card, put a foreshadow counter on Ominous Seas. You get to remove 8 foreshadow counters, and then you create an 8-8 Kraken. That's right, an 8-8 Kraken, which is insane, right? Couple this with Into the Story, which draws you 4 cards at a time, and, well, very obviously, you can be hitting Krakens like no tomorrow. Cathartic Reunion allows you to draw 3 cards for just 2 mana. Now, you do have to discard 2, but again, we're focusing on that card draw as it procs the Tutelage, it procs the Ominous Seas, it procs the Improbable Alliance, right? Uh, Fire Prophecy, some good removal. Also, card draw. Scorching Dragonfire, good removal that it exiles. So that's important. Thrill Possibility, good instant speed. Draw two, which means at instant speed, we can proc the Improbable and, you know, have some fuel for the Teferi's Tutelage, as well as Mischievous Chimera. Three copies of Didn't Say Please to help fill up your opponent's graveyard for the Into the Stories. And honestly, if you want to go more counter heavy instead of removal, you know, you most certainly can. You can remove uh, Cathartic as it is a little hard to cast and it is only a sorcery speed spell. Put in some more counter spells and then you can go more controlly instead of uh, sort of tempo beat down mill that makes sense anyways reign of revelation we have this in here as a one-off instant speed draw three cards and discard a card as it's really good we could also since we are playing a few enchantments here with the mischievous chimera and improbable lies and tutelai there's a three mana draw three i believe thirst for meaning right and it's like draw three and then discard two unless you discard an enchantment would actually deal pretty good in this deck but uh yeah, the Reign of Revelations is what I chose to go for. And then three copies of Into the Story. Um, it is a little bit harder to hit this than your classic Rogue deck, as if you don't end up hitting your Tutelage or your Rune Crab, then you don't really have a way to fill up your opponent's graveyard. I mean, you have Didn't Say Please, but again, that's why you may want to think about going more into Counter Magic, although you have Removal, so that can, again, help feed into the story. Anyways, we played this deck with completely zero Rare Lands, just just the swift water cliffs right and it performed beautifully because you have so much card draw you have so much cycling so to speak that you can do you're able to find the rest of the mana that you need so all in all if you're a newer player you're trying to figure out how budget decks work trying to figure out how tempo how beat down sort of works this is honestly a deck that i would try out and it's it's very cheap so i don't know of a single rare that we have in the deck or mythic this is completely rare and mythic free zero zero across the board 
Anyways, thanks everybody for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to leave a like down below on the video as it does sort of help me gauge what kind of content y'all like more, right? Obviously, I have to take it all with a grain of salt as numbers constantly change, but it does help me in, in the generals, right? Anyways, if you're enjoying the content, please be sure to leave a comment down below if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or you're just answering the daily question. If you're new here and you want to help support the channel through a completely free means, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon. We're almost to 10,000 subscribers. What a big number, a massive amount of people that I never thought I'd actually see in my life. So I'm really appreciative to everyone that has hit the follow button or the subscribe button, whatever you want to call it. Um, and those that will in the future, right? If you're looking to support the channel through a monetary means, there's a join button down below the video. Uh, you can click it. It'll give you a list of perks. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's hop into some magic. And I hope you're all having a great day. Uh, Quadux. <laughs> Quadux. Well, we don't have any red mana, but that's the thing with playing budget is, uh, so, you know, sometimes you just don't have the other colors, so... We'll try to keep it and see what we can see. We do have the didn't say please in the frantic inventory, so that in the very least is nice. And I feel like I'm forgetting something this morning. Uh, right, my blue mana. <laughs> Here I was thinking I was I was leaving it, but uh, yeah, I probably should have cast this first. Try to look for some red mana, but that's okay. We have mana for didn't say please, and I guess that is... Uh, an accomplishment all on its own, so. Let's grind one to the top. You never like to see that, really. And let's get our two-card draw here. A tutelage and some red mana. Oh, man, oh, man. We are here to partay now. And more red mana. Okay. So if I put down tutelage, we'll only have one mana left over. If I put down improbable, we can't use mischievous. I say we go mountain and tutelage. We don't really have a more efficient play as far as our mana goes. We can discard some blue mana. I think we got uh, plenty. Plenty, plenty. Skyclave Apparition to take out the tutelage. Never would have thought of it. Never would have thought of it. All right, so we'll put down one of these Chimera. Probably that's it. This way we can keep mana for didn't say please. Arcanist Owl. They're looking for something. I don't want them to find it. Rune Crab. Well, that does help us mill them up, so sure. That's going to be it for our foe. Now we will play down the Chimera and the Alliance here. Get in for two. Now anytime we play a spell, or at least our first spell on the opponent's turn, we'll deal two damage to Scry two. That's pretty good. We'll Scry one and then Scry one again, right? There is a difference between Scry and two and scrying one twice for newer players that is that's <clears throat> for y'all anyways another rune crab wowee wow 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 all right they're down to 30 dirty 30 <laughs> Um, so we will go ahead and swing in with the Chimera, if at all possibly. And indeed, they will get in. Nice, so the opponent's down to 13. We will improbable and basically just discard whatever card we get here. It was another alliance, that's okay. This way we get a little fairy down. So we got 5 damage in the sky, that'll kick them down to 8. And it's Yorian. They are rebouncing the Skyclave. I'm a little surprised, but I mean, I guess if you got a 4 5 to block, you don't mind, right? We'll see. Glass Casket to take out the 3 3. Okay. But shouldn't you. Shouldn't you have done that first? Like Glass Casket to take out 
you know, the one one fairy, and then Yorian, and then Glass. I just feel like there's a different, a better way to have done that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, don't don't listen to me by any means. You you got me by the balls right now, so. <laughs> I do want this, but we need to actually be drawing cards for this to happen, right? Maybe I just cycle it. Let's just cycle it. Look for something else. A land. Well, that's not the something else I really wanted. Sometimes you get what you get and you don't complain a bit. Now they're down to their 20s. I don't have a good joke about that, so I'm sorry, ladies and gents. <laughs> Cathartic Reunion, that would have been a nice one as well. That's okay. We'll go on the defensive. We can still mill them. That's the nice thing about this is it mill deck is it has just as much potential to beat them down as it does to mill them. And that's sort of what I was going for with the Chimera, right? And they're going to be drawing cards. You're insane. Aquatics. You're insane in the membrane, I tell you. They're down to 13. Every land for us is milling six for them. So they should, yeah, I was about to say, they should start prioritizing these rune crabs a little bit harder. <clears throat> Highly doubt they swing it with the Yorian, because then that gives me an opportunity to swing it with my creatures. They are. Ooh. Ooh. All right. I certainly don't mind taking the two from Solemn into the story. Well, hello. Yes, please. Didn't say please. Another tutelage and a land. This is all very, very good. Problem is we have so much red mana. So this is definitely coming down, right? That mills them down to 10 if i play you they're down to eight down to seven but we don't have the didn't say please mana Ooh, i think we gotta keep the mana for didn't say please i think so all right so i mean i guess we can get in with the chimera we'll leave the one one back as an extra blocker <clears throat> all righty I'd say this game's going pretty well. We're up against one of the, one of the top tier decks, right? Yorian, Azorius Control, Azorius Yorian Control, however you want to say it. And we're we're sort of holding our own, you know, sort of holding our own. All right, Aquatics. Shatter. Well, we got to go for the didn't say please. If we can hit it, we're all good. And even if we don't hit it. Well, if we don't use it, we'll have just wasted mana, right? <laughs> Scorching Dragonfire. They're about to wipe the board. I don't think we want that. We want some card draw, actually. If we're going to be using this Teferi's Tutelage, right? They're down to six. That's one land, a Tutelage draw two. That's going to take out the Rune Crab? What? Wow. That's going to take out the Rune Crab. There we go. Okay. All right. Yeah, had me a little worried. All right. So we'll play down the tutelage. Draw. Fire prophecy. Discard the land. Yep. What are they down to? Four. This will be another card draw for us. So we can deal... I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter, right? We're getting a 2-2 two -two back either way. Uh, unfortunately, we do have to cycle the didn't say please, but uh, maybe we'll hit some card draw here. We didn't, we hit a land. Oh, that's so unfortunate. We were so close. So very close. But now when they go to draw, they're going to be left on one singular solo card, which means they have to win on this next turn, right? Next two turns. I guess they could take out tutelage, and then I would have zero ways to mill them of that last card, so they would have another turn, right? Oh no, it's happening. <laughs> It's happening. But they do still only have two turns to win, right? So they better start doing some stuff fast. Eh, Might have should have taken out that 1-1, one, one, actually, considering the amount of damage that you need to do. You know? You know, George? Anyways, we'll block the Skyclave. I don't really get why they're swinging him with that. I guess just to do the extra damage. You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Alright, well, they're getting all the chances in the world to win here. This is it. Do they have it? They have 4, 8, 10 damage on board. That's not gonna be enough. That's not gonna be enough. Do we get it? Surely they don't have some way to cycle with their 
graveyard into their library, right? No, okay. Sweet. <laughs> so yeah, free to play mill just took down fully stacked out Azorius control. Mike it J. Mike it J. 81. Um, this seems like a keepable hand. We have a good spread of our mana. We have a good lay of the land, if you will. And, uh, you know, we got the turn one rune crab, which is always a nice thing, so. We will go ahead and play down the red mana. This way we gain the ability to use thrill or scorching or fire. Or any of those lovely cards, right? Mono green. Something of the sorts. All right, so we resolve this, and then we just uh, use one of these two on it, right? Improbable Alliance. Lovely, lovely, lovely. In another land. I got rid of that untap because we were planning on playing the tap land as all of our spells cost two that we currently had in hand. So, anyways, we'll go ahead and get down the improbable and this will start fueling our fairies. Y'all know how much I love fueled up fairies. Those FFs are beautiful. Your Voskian. That one's a little harder to deal with, not gonna lie. That one, uh... Might be a little difficult. But we we can manage this, right? We can still still deal. Still deal. We could use our Chimera to block Diorvo and use Scorching Dragonfire. If we had fairies, we could use fairies to block and then Scorching. We're gonna get at least one fairy here though, right? Although we'll have to discard the Scorching to draw. Oh, is that worth it? Is that worth it? I guess we'll see what they play, right? Stone cool. Just a big old stone cool. That won't raise your vote any. Well, I guess if they attack... Okay. He didn't even let me get my sentence out. <laughs> uh, nope. Don't want to land, thank you. Improbable and improbable. <laughs> All right, so we're about to have a fairy army. Ooh. Well, I want to get down the the alliances first before the tutelage. I know. Call me crazy. I almost made a mistake and swung with my chimera there. We are going to take eight points of damage here. It's not going to be fun, but uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll we'll still be all right in the end. And again, look at. Look at our opponent. They're just slapping down rares against us. Like, come on. Where's my budget section at? They really should create that for magic. Like a constant, constant budget section, you know? And it's like, you can have maybe one mythic, three rares, and then the rest is only commons and uncommons. But budget, not artisan, where you can't use any mythics or rares, because then people can never test them, right? So we're gonna have to take this. Um, I'm not happy about that Hydra's growth on the uh, on the ye old Stone Cool Serpent over there. So if I play this, we'll draw and then have to discard one. If I play this, we'll just draw half two mana left over. I kind of like this better. Again, we can still win by getting to the mill. Ooh, that's rough. I think we discard the Frantic, keep the land. All right, this will give us some things to block with, but that stone cool is going to get so freaking fracking big. Like, it's about to be, yeah, 10 10. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. We need that unsummon. Do I have an unsummon still or a stern dismissal? Do I have one of these bounce spells still within my deck? We're going to live with two. But blocking more than that doesn't, won't, wouldn't matter too much. Nice. That's a GG. All right. 
They were just playing some sneaky shit with the Hydra's growth and the invigorating surge. I can respect that. Uh, Pierce the Veil. When did when did they start playing magic? <laughs> Last I checked, that was a rock band, right? Or heavy metal something. Something like that. Um, I want to get the fairies down, but Ominous Seas builds off of every draw. Not just your second. So I feel like getting it down first is right. Ooh, that's a yikes. I'd rather discard the frantic over the land. Am I muted? No, okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's pretty good for them. Pretty good indeed. What are they at? Four? Four, four, four. They're going to get a little look-see into my hand here. So we'll get this out. They'll take an end to the story. All's well that ends well, I suppose. Next turn, they'll be down to six for sure. Ooh, that actually kicks them down low enough, doesn't it? Yeah, nine, what, what? Good enough for me. Um, I think we wait. Draw on their turn. That's bad because it gets rid of our frantic inventory, but at least it was only one, right? Anyways, this into the story will proc the improbable alliance and, you know, TT, the good old fairy tutelage. See what we can hit here. Another rune crab, a mischievous, swift water, milling the opponent for some, building up our crack encounters. Oh, hey, look, we have a kraken. We might should have waited until they swung in then. I didn't realize we were going to be at eight, but you know, that's what counting does for you. So we well, can just pass the combat, really. Go ahead, do it. I dare you. Wow, they actually did it. I was, <laughs> you know, I was not expecting that. I gotta say, of all the things, that was not on my list of expectations. Anyways, another rune crab coming down. The opponent's gotta hate this. They've gotta hate it. But again, we're, we're playing budget decks here, so I'm showing y'all some stuff that's obviously very viable, right? Obviously, obviously. So let's see, let's see. Another good old clack bridge. We can sacrifice a, uh, a goat here, I suppose. Although, honestly, we're getting up to the point where, like, <laughs> we could not, you know? We could obviously just not sort of block. They're down to 21. This puts them down to 15. I think we do fire prophecy to draw us, create some fairies, hit, hit the Teferi tutelage, right? And you never know. We may... Uh, May find some more card draw here. Indeed, we did. So, Viola. Maybe some more damage? No, but another tutelage is, you know, fine by me. Fine by me. They're down to. Ooh, they'll be down to seven after this. It's a little bit of a yikes. <laughs> for them, of course, not for us. Now we get in with our, our flyers in the sky, right? Actually, there's the only two creatures that can attack that have damage. If you'll notice, we have a theme of zero damage creatures there. Oh, that's really good for him. So how many is that? Five, seven, eight, eight times two, 16. Woo. And then good old clack bridge, huh? All right, well, we definitely sacrifice one there. Let them draw. <laughs> They're down to five. Boom, boom, boom. I got bad use for him. We actually got him. Down to three life, but in the nick of time, that's right, we win. 
So they'll probably scoop out here, given they gotta wait through all the counters. Okay, nope, well. There we go, Pierce the Veil, milling them to zero. All right, well, another beautiful hand and another uh, time of us getting to go first. I'm I'm all for it, right? Turn one Rune Crab into a turn two Improbable with the Scorching and uh, Into the Rule to back it up. Two Into the Rules, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, a rune crab, you get in there. You you fuck him up. Shadow spear. Ooh. You spicy spicy dog. You know what? I shouldn't have blocked there. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I was gonna say they could actually have had uh dead weight, and that's something that decks with arc fiends often run. Ooh, okay. So it's a veto, it's a mono black devotion, I see. Well then we shouldn't be worried. Too worried, at least, about Arc Fiends. We should save our mana for instant speed. I was thinking about using Scorching because it, like, gets rid of Arc Fiends for good. But realistically, we should just leave it on the board. They might sink mana with Shadow Spear into it, right? They do that. Beautiful. Freaking beautiful. Call of the Death Dweller. They're bringing back two Arc Fiends vessels. Okay, so <clears throat> we can do this to get rid of one. Come our turn, we can bounce the other. No, 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 wait. We shouldn't use this. We should resolve and we should just bounce both. All right. Right, right, right. Right like that. And then next turn we can do the other. Hopefully we'll hit a land here so we can use that and Scorching, potentially. Okay, we hit a land. Beautiful. <laughs> Wasn't actually expecting it, but I'll take it. Oh, we could draw a card here. That would give us a fairy, which could block the Arc Fiends. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's draw a card. I remove your 5-5 five five and create a 1-1. One one. Two tutelai. You can never have too many tutelage. Feed the swarm. Ooh, you don't see that one too often. But I'm happy they actually chose the crab of Amara and Probable Alliance. Truly and deedly. <clears throat> we'll take that damage, no problemo. Time to start getting down some tutelai. Ooh. Ooh, 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 that land is really good for us. I want the Scorching, don't get me wrong, but we need the other tutelage. And uh, the land we can play now, which gives us access to this. So if we wanted to, we could discard the tutelage. We'll see. I'm going to leave both fairies back to block. Opponent's already down to 37 cards in deck. So I believe, I believe we can get there. Silver Smoke Goo. Being a straight fiend. Swing it on in. Do we block? Nah. It's only two points of damage, you know? We got time. There's no need. There is no need. My turn. <clears throat> My freaking fracking goodness. <laughs> Somebody wants me to have these tutelages. If we hit a land here, I'll, I'm, I'm going to discard that thrill for sure. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, opponent. This has got to be your worst day ever. So we're going to mill them six cards every time we draw a card, which is absolutely insane. <laughs> Oh, I would have loved to have that extra improbable. That would have given us a solid body, uh, solid board of defensive creatures, you know, every single turn being able to create two fairies. That's okay. I won't complain about the yield one a turn. They are down to 24 cards, which means theoretically we only need to draw eight cards. We get to draw one at the beginning of every single turn of ours. So if we could take three turns, right? that's three cards, then we realistically only need to draw five cards within three turns to mill them, right? 
Does that make sense? Hopefully. <laughs> we need to pull a card from the top of our deck eight times, basically. It doesn't matter when those come in or what. Veto is interesting, and I think that might actually be reason enough for us to go full block seize here. Now, they can just immediately equip the Shadow Spear back to the Veto. But it doesn't give it lifelink, right? Oh, it does. Ooh. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It might not have been ideal to block the 2-2 the two -two there. So, Shadow Spear onto the Veto. Yep. None of us are surprised, really. <laughs> Scorching Dragonfire. Oh, no! Where were you last turn, you bastard? That's fine. We could use Improbable here, draw a discard. And given we are trying to go for that, I think we might... No, 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 no. Because we can use Scorching plus a little Fairy to get rid of the Veto. This is fine. This is fine. Gray Merchant. That's going to deal three... Deal six. They're dealing ten points of damage here. Oh my goodness. It's a rough, rough world for us. Alright. Mm-hmm. Alright, back to my turn. Give me something good. I said give me something good, game. <laughs> what world are you living in? That's not good. They're down to 13. That costs everything to do? Oh, well, geez. So... We're dead if we can't get rid of these two. We can take one more hit from the Vito, but we gotta get rid of these two. There's no way for us to do that, right? My goodness. <laughs> My freaking goodness. No, because that cycles for two, not one. Ah, I think we lose here. We were so close. Because <laughs> the 1-1 one, one will block the Silver Smoke, right? So if we had 2 mana, or if I had any other way to draw that didn't cost me 6 mana there, we would have been fine. No! <laughs> they got us in the end. 